Hi, Mark Oswald, your host for London Dairy Heart, Home, and Soul. And 17th year, Mr. Greenberg, yes. uh, of presenting a budget to the voters and taxpayers. So with me this evening is Nate Greenberg, our superintendent of schools, and the chairperson for the school board, Nancy Hendricks. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for Mark. having us today. You're welcome. Mr. Greenberg, yes. please. Well, uh, we're pleased to be here today to talk about the proposed budget uh, that people will be reviewing at the Liberty Session and then voting on in March. The proposed budget is $71,150,000. That's a $371,997 increase and represents uh, just a slightly more than a half a, half a percent increase over this year's budget and is $60,000 below default. Having said that, I want people to be aware of the fact that we have a number of Warren articles that we'll be talking about in the next show, four of which have to do with contractual agreements, and those normally would be in the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes people have questions about what's the difference between a proposed budget and the default budget. Right. The simplest way to describe a default budget is that it's all ongoing costs, including contractual costs, minus one-time expenses. So we spent time from Thanksgiving through early January reviewing the entire budget with the school board. And uh, at the conclusion, we came to a dollar figure of $71,150,000 that we believe will meet all the needs of our programs and also absorb some of the growth uh, absorb the growth that we're seeing. So in looking at the budget, I think there's some factors that people should be aware of. One, we designed the budget and the board approved the budget that will allow us to maintain prison programs, both academic and co-curricular. One of the big concerns we had was maintaining appropriate class size, particularly at the elementary level. And a little bit uh, later on in the show, I'll talk about what we've seen for growth compared to what we've had in the past. Uh, we want to phase in a new elementary math program. Scott Liberty, our assistant superintendent and superintendent-elect, uh, has been working with our elementary staff on uh, a new math program. It's called Math and Focus, and it's going to be the first year of phasing it in in grades K, 3, 4, and 5, and it matches up with what we're doing at the middle school. Well, and just to refresh people's memories, we implemented the, that in the eighth grade, what, Two and a half years yes. ago? Yeah. So. And it's <coughs> all at the middle school. That's right. Um, one of the other things we want to do is, is try and keep up with hardware and technology so we have money in there uh, to prudently replace appropriate tech, uh, technology and hardware. We also, because of the major investment we've put in, in our wireless network, we're going to a more robust network security system. So that's included. When we look at budget, too, I think what's also important is not just the total enrollment, but also the composition of our enrollment. So we want to make sure we meet the needs of our special ed students, our ESOL students, and also our 504 students, basically meet the needs of all our kids. And so I think it's important for people to know that presently we have 742 students, pre-K through 12, that are in uh, special ed programming. We have 291 students that are, uh, have 504 plans. Those are plans that are designed around students that may have particular life issues, whether it's significant allergies, physical ailments, uh, uh, autism, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen an uptick in ESOL, students who have English as a second language. Presently, we have 26 students that speak nine different languages. That's K through 12. So. Can you imagine that? We want That's to. Pretty good. I yeah. know. I know. I think it's amazing. Right. We want to, and also too, we want to continue to absorb the state downshifting of costs. And, um, though our adequacy money is going up slightly this year because of the increase in enrollment, we're still feeling the impact of downshifting of cost. And one a perfect example is when the state wanted everyone, this is going back a significant number of years, meaning teachers, police, fire, to go into the state retirement system. 
the state made a commitment that they would pick up 35% of the cost. Well, several years ago, they decided that they were going to phase that out. So now the state picks up none of the cost for state retirement. So that's being borne by local taxpayers. And I, I think it's important to mention about that um, that we would never, and we can't by law, certainly just you know wig out on, on that particular cost. It's required by law, is it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what happens, Mark, is that when you have a cost like that that you have to absorb into your budget, people seem don't always quite understand that that comes right out of your operating budget. Mm -hmm. So it affects everything that we <coughs> do in our district, all services. Am I not right about yes, that? Yes, that's correct. So, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, it's perfectly okay. <laughs> all right. Um, one of the other things, too, that we're looking at is enrollment. Let me give you a little mm -hmm. bit of history. If we go back to 2006 and project to the end of this year, uh, we saw an enrollment drop of 1,129 students. This year, as of October 1, we began to see an uptick of students. We have 58 more students than we had in 15-16, and we absorbed 108 more students than over projections. So we're, and we're had another 45 kids over projection in kindergarten. And what we're seeing with the new developments that are coming into town, that the vast majority of those children are elementary kids, in fact, about 65%. So that's where we're seeing the growth. So within the body of the budget, one of the things that we've done is include three new elementary teachers. Now, oftentimes people will say, well, all you do is add, add, add. So let me give you a little bit mm -hmm. of history. Uh, from 06 to 2017, because of the enrollment drop, there was a, we dropped 60.8 certified positions, that's teachers and administrators. That's one position for every 17.12 drop in enrollment. Do you happen to have a dollar figure attached to that? No, I don't. I, that would just be interesting. I mean, that's a lot of faculty. Yes, it is. Quite a bit. Yeah. And then non-certified, uh, which is uh, classroom assistants, uh, administrative assistants, a whole bit, 78.4, which is one for every 14.5 drop in enrollment. So the net reduction over that period of time is 130, almost 138 people, positions, that's one for every 8.2 student drop in enrollment. So we've had a 17.5% reduction in staff and a 20% basically reduction in enrollment. So it's almost one to one. Mm -hmm. So now what we're projecting for next year with the new construction, there are about 4,578 students. So therefore there's and that's only 35 less than what we had in 1314, and that's why we're making the request for the additional staff. We've also seen, too, a net increase in our special ed population. We have uh, 52, enroll 52 new enrollees since July 1, and we have 21 students that are receiving more acute and intensive services than we had the previous year. So, in essence, considering all the factors, we're looking at appropriate elementary class size, flexibility for growth, addressing our special ed populations. Three, uh, we're asking for three elementary teachers, uh, one pupil services coordinator because of the increase in enrollment and responsibilities, reduction of two full-time equivalents at the high school because our numbers are dropping there a little bit, and phasing in the math and, fo math and focus program. So those are really the major threads as we run through the budget. So what we want to do, and Nancy can talk a little bit late, uh, a little bit after me about some of the things that are going on in the district and results we're getting. So in essence, we're proposing a budget that is $60,000 below default, represents a little bit more than a half a percent increase. Uh, that's without the contractual agreements. And we believe meets the needs of our programs allows us to continue to provide the programs and services that we are now and has the ability to absorb the growth and uh, not only from the new developments but also too from people who are selling their homes 
and people moving into town. So that combination. So we're trying to keep an eye on the future, maintain programs, and be fiscally prudent. One of the things I'd like to have you touch on, Nate, briefly is you, you get quite a, a proven track record over the years of what I think are some innovative approaches. You, you alluded to the staff yes. reductions, and I think the ratio was like t for every 21 students uh, in, in drop in enrollment would equate to a full-time equivalent. But if you could take just a moment for the viewers to understand what you've done sure. to avoid tuitioning out students some of the cost mm. savings, I know Chuck Sapple has done right. a, a superior job in terms of uh, energy conservation, uh, and that's resulted in millions. Absolutely. And, and this goes, it should not go without saying that um, Kim Carpinone has done a remarkable job in, in exactly that mm -hmm. exact item, cost avoidance, w I think. Yeah, absolutely. And let's touch on that because yes. often, oftentimes, one of the things that we try to look at when we put the budget together or just general operating procedures, are there ways in which we can avoid costs and are there ways in which we can actually generate revenue and savings? So let's take the cost avoidance first. We developed a number of years ago uh, in-house special education programs for low incident special ed students. So we did it for a number of reasons. One, we feel it's more effective to have our kids stay in their home schools, in the home school district. Mm -hmm. and provide as good or better programming they would have if we, they were sent out of district. So over the years we've developed those. Next year, because of that, there's going to be a cost avoidance of over $9 million. And if we go back a number of years, in effect we have had a cost avoidance of over $77 million, if you, which is a phenomenal number. Our energy management program, which we started way before most other school districts in the state, mm -hmm. saves us annually over $300,000, which is a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. A number of years ago, uh, uh, about four or five years ago, we, we entered into an agreement with the Hooks at School District to accept some tuition students. As a result, we are we will generate a revenue with the, those tuition students plus the tuition students in our preschool program of over a million dollars. That's the equivalent of approximately a 27 cent offset on the tax rate. Right. Right. So when you look at it, just like your own home, what are ways in which we can save costs and what are ways we can bring in more money? And that's what we've tried to do. So as we put the budget together, we try to and operate. We want to make sure that we put we continue with our cost avoidance, and then also too give us an opportunity to generate revenue. Oftentimes, people do not believe that as a public entity you're generating revenue, but in this case, we are through the tuition students uh, that we have. So it's been quite a plus for us. Good, thank you. So we've been, yes. <coughs> Again, thank you for having us. So, um, you know, I don't have to tell you that our London Dairy Schools are um, superior to many in our state, and, and, and we certainly intend to keep them that way. We have a lot going on, and we have some very, very, um, I think, attractive numbers and things that we can talk about and to be very proud of. So the niche organization um, rates over 10,000 schools nationwide every year, and we are proud to report to you some of the following. So um, just this past year, in 2000, the class of 2016, we had a 94% acceptance rate to two- and four-year colleges. I think that's a remarkable statistic. But even more remarkable, Mark, is that our dropout rate is less than one-third of 1%. When I tell people that, you know, people in my family, people that I know around the United States of America, they can't believe that I can say that to them. But we're one of the few states, is that not, or uh, districts in our state that can boast about those numbers. Yes. Is that correct? correct? So we're very proud of that. Um, and of course, all of this has is very closely, certainly tied to the 
talent that we have, the quality of the talent that we have in our district, and how our, our district supports um, our schools and our budget. So I also want to report to you that we have 14 AP courses in our district, which we have enrolled currently 526 students. I think that's a, a, an attractive statistic. Um, we have over 1,100 students enrolled in honors classes. We have um, 197 students enrolled in, six, in 16 project running start programs and we have 29 dual credit um, courses where we have 324 students enrolled. And we have a whole host of after school activities that we can offer our students anything from the bicycling club to the chess club to um, all of our athletics. We have wonderful athletics here in Londonderry and all of those items of course are supported in our budget and supported by our, our academic, or I mean our community. Um, we also have STEM initiatives, you know, science, technology, mm -hmm. engineering and math initiatives, K through 12. And you know, I'm proud of all of our programs but I am especially proud of our adult education program and that's the program that we have that captures students that may want to um, graduate earlier. They may have other challenges in their life that is, makes going to a quote traditional school or going attending in a, a traditional day more challenging and that's another thing that I'm very proud of in our district is that we recognize that our students are not one, one size fits all and they don't all fit in one the same box and so you know, putting together curriculum to accommodate all of our students um, is supported by our budget as well. Um, we have 79 athletic teams that participate with, excuse me, with 1,668 participants at the middle and the high school level. So we have unbelievable things that occur in our district. We have an, a, a remarkable band you know, that as you know has been invited for the fifth time to go back to the Rose Bowl. So we have a lot to be proud of in our district and again supported um, by our budget and our budget is certainly supported by our, our community. And um, you know, what is one of the first questions that people ask you, Mark, when they're looking to come into this community? Tell me about the schools. Tell me about the schools. Tell me about the music program. <laughs> Usually <laughs> in that order. Oh, is that right? Oh yeah. 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 So we have, we have a lot to, to be proud of, and is our budget be big? Yes, it is, but um, we also have a, a tremendous district that we can be proud of that supports the needs of all of our students, I think. Fascinating that um, we came here 30 years ago, and I was working corporately in Andover, Massachusetts, and I remember asking, I want the best public school system within an hour's commute, because we've been in suburban Dallas, Atlanta, and so on. And they said, Londonderry. And I said, where is that? They said, New Hampshire. <laughs> Being new to the region, I'm thinking, oh my God, that's another state away. Yeah. And what's remarkable is I've watched this uh, with our family going through the system and others, is that the academic achievement and the extracurricular uh, excellence in, in sports and music is far advanced from where it was in 1987. Yeah. I believe you. I it's believe just, you. It, it just, it keeps, getting, the hits keep on coming, you know, it's and you just. Know, and, uh, and I'm sure you hear this every day. We moved here 10 years ago, and at the time we were living in um, Ringe, New Hampshire, and I toured many school districts. Obviously this was one of them, but I had been others over here, and I kept coming back to this one, coming back to this one, and you know, it's, it's just a remarkable district, and I know you hear that all the mm -hmm. time. I believe we're extremely fortunate that we have just an incredibly talented staff, yeah. faculty and administration, whether we're talking about the teachers, the principals, the administrative assistants, the custodial staff, uh, the people in the cafeteria, everybody. And they work as a team. They're focused on what they're doing. They're focused on our learners. And that's their first priority. And I think we're extremely fortunate that we have the quality of people that we have. And I have to also say, too, it, it's not only is it the team within the school district, it's the support that we've gotten and guidance we've gotten from the school board. And what's what incredibly important is the support from the community. Uh, and it's not necessarily, you know, when people say that, they automatically, well, you're just talking about money. No. 
We're talking about participation, whether they're parents or community members coming into the schools and, and working. And it's also, it's, it's just a mindset, an inclusionary mindset mm -hmm. that people have so that you do have that warm feeling when you walk into a school. And it's that warm feeling in the community as a whole. And uh, I think the community as a whole should be proud of itself and uh, hopefully people feel that way about the schools. And quality people uh, do quality work. And we're very fortunate that those are the types of people that we have in our school district. And they work in a community that feels the same way. You know, another thing I want to comment on um, that I think is, has been very helpful in, in terms of adding to our success is our partnerships with local businesses here in, in Londonderry. Um, you could probably comment better than I could, but I don't remember, how, was it two or three years ago when we started the Futures Lab? Yes. And so we have businesses that come in, you know, several times in the course of the year that actually sit down and talk with students about specific industries mm -hmm. and what, what it's like to work in that industry. And one of my favorite stories is we had a student that wanted to be an attorney, as I recall. And so she met with an attorney and they talked extensively about law. And lo and behold, she discovered maybe that wasn't what she wanted to do. Right. There was something else that she would rather do. Right. And how wonderful to discover that now before a student goes to college and takes several classes and spends, you know, a lot of money and then goes, geez, this really isn't what I want to do. So I think that those partnerships are very, very important in our district. And, you know, another thing I think that adds to the success of our district and certainly aids in the support of our, our schools is several years ago, um, Katie Sullivan started the Pay It Forward Club. Mm -hmm. And our students are out with Katie every weekend volunteering somewhere. It's a soup kitchen, it's the veterans, it's, it's a variety of different places where people need help. And they do it on their own time um, with Katie. And what a remarkable thing for kids to learn at a young age, number one, how important it is to give back to your community right. and to understand, indeed, that the world is bigger than themselves. I, and I think that's very important, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you having us. for your us. leadership. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Some big shoes to fill. Yeah, glad I'm not filling them. No. <laughs> Scott, Scott is going to be absolutely fantastic, yeah. and uh, people are going to cherish the idea that he's here, and um, he's established a real positive relationship with everybody, and he's going to be truly outstanding, truly outstanding. Great. Well, we wish you the best. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you yeah. both. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, London Dairy, for watching. Don't forget to participate in the deliberative session and then voting uh, in early March.